What is Employee Pension Scheme? Your CTC is not your salary. Your CTC is made up of many different components, one of which is your pension. And we need to know about it. While a portion of what we earn is constantly diverted to this account, we hardly possess the knowledge of how it functions. To add on, the Employee Pension Scheme occupies a big pie of the savings in most households. That being the case, it is crucial that you understand how to use it. The Employee Pension Scheme, or APS, is a social security scheme managed by the Employees Provident Fund Organization EPFO, in India. It's designed to provide financial security to employees during their retirement years. Here's how it works. APS is a mandatory scheme for employees covered under the Employees Provident Fund EPF, Act 1952. When an employee contributes to their EPF, a portion of that contribution is also allocated to the APS. Now, let's talk about the key features of APS. Firstly, APS provides a pension to employees upon their retirement, disablement, or death. This pension is based on the employee's length of service and average salary. Secondly, APS ensures a minimum pension amount, currently set at 1000 rupees per month, for eligible employees. Lastly, APS also offers benefits such as a pension for family members in case of the employee's demise and a reduced pension for employees who opt for early retirement. Eligibility Criteria for APS All of the following criteria have to fulfill to avail the benefits of the Employee Provident Scheme. The person should be a member of the Employees Provident Fund organization. Though not continuously, the person should hold a minimum service period of 10 years, i.e. the duration you serve the organization. In case you have failed to avail of the benefits by the age of 58 and a year or two passes, you will be allowed to avail of the pension at an additional rate of 4% per year. Calculation of APS Pensionable Salary Pensionable salary is the average of the last 12 months salary which the individual received. In case the individual joined the work on the 15th of a particular month, he would have worked only for 15 days. In such a case, the employee receives the benefit of any such non-contributory day. That is, say, he received 15,000 for 15 days. But for the calculation, the entire 30-month salary will be taken, which will be 30,000 in the above scenario. So the pensionable salary will be, equals 30,000, monthly salary, into 8.33%, EPF contribution of employee, monthly pensionable salary equals 2,499, so the annual pensionable salary of the individual is, 2,499 multiplied by 12 months, equals to 29,988. Pensionable service. This is the duration during which the employee serves or works. If an employee withdraws the entire corpus before fulfilling the minimum 10-year period, he will have to restart the whole process. If any employee has completed 20 years of service, 2 years will be added to his serviceable period, 20 plus 2, as a reward. For pension calculation, the bar is set as 6 months. Let's look at these criteria with an example. You have completed 10 years in 2 months, then the total pensionable service period is 10 years. You have completed 10 years in 7 months, then, the total pensionable service period is 11 years. So when you cross 6 months, it is considered 1 year and anything less is not considered. So monthly APS pension receivable is calculated as follows. 29,988, annual pensionable salary as calculated in the previous scenario, multiplied by 15, assumed pensionable service year, divided by 70 which gives you 6,426 rupees. So, that's a brief overview of the Employee Pension Scheme. It's a crucial aspect of employee benefits, providing financial security and peace of mind during retirement. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Until next time, take care and goodbye.